This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to deal with Seekers. Let's get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you the two main types of Seekers. We're gonna cover just the plain Seeker, the one that has wings that flies, and the Seeker Brute. Everything else is pretty easy to deal with as far as like the ticks and all the little tiny ones that you find in the dungeons. Most of those should be able to be one shot by the time you are able to or should be messing around in the Mistlands. So I'm not really going to worry about those. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the basic mechanics of dealing with the Brute and the Seeker, and then I will show you how to deal with them in the actual Mistlands. So the first thing I advise when going into the Mistlands is eating high health food. For this demonstration, for this video, I'm going to be using fish wraps, lox pie, and serpent stew. That is going to give me a lot of health. As you can see, I have 250 health now and about 123 stamina. That's more than enough to work with for what we got going on. I also highly advise using the Fenris set of armor, having it fully maxed out, fully upgraded to tier four. As you can see, you have the coat, the leggings, and the hood, and then I'm just wearing a normal linen cape. The reason I advise this is because this is going to give you a nice speed boost that gives you just maneuverability that you're going to need for basically either of these fights because both of these creatures are very maneuverable. It should give you a total of 52 armor, and because we are going to be making use of shields, that should be enough for you to deal with either of these creatures. The next thing I highly recommend is using Frostner. For some reason, when Frostner hits either of these creatures, it deals white damage to them. Everything else that you're going to use is going to do gray damage to them, except for a specific instance with the Brute, which I will demonstrate when we get to the Brute. So we have a basic Seeker here, and if you look, you can see I just hit him with a spear, and it did gray damage. If I swap over to Blunt, and we hit him again, you can see it deals gray damage. I'm gonna swap over to a sword that also deals spirit damage. And if I hit it with that, you can see that also deals gray damage. Last but not least, we're gonna swap over to the Mistwalker sword because this deals frost and slash. So we already know that slash and spirit do gray, and if we pop over here and we use this and we hit it, you can see, once again, gray damage. So everything that you're gonna hit it with for some reason, it's resistant to, except for if you hit it with Frostner. And if we wait till it attacks and I hit it, you can see we did white damage. Now, the weird thing about that is, is this does every damage that we just did. It does blunt, it does frost, and it does spirit. Why they are not resistant to Frostner is probably a bug. We'll have to wait and see. If it is, I'll make an update video. However, the slowdown that this gives you is super, super handy for fighting either of these creatures. So even if they do become resistant to it in a future patch, it's still probably going to be the weapon of choice for going into fights with them. At least until you can craft the Mistwalker, which you're going to have to fight a bunch of them in order to get the materials to craft the Mistwalker, which as I stated, also deals frosting. Damage. The next thing I advise is using a shield. You can either use a buckler or a tower shield, whichever you prefer. I would specialize in one or the other. I would not go for the normal just round shields because they're kind of in the middle and they don't really excel at one thing or another. So I advise choosing either parry or just blocking. I'll show you examples of dealing with both. I recommend parry, just practicing with it, getting good at it because it gives you a massive advantage. So the basic Basic Seekers are really easy to deal with and you technically can use anything to fight them even though they are resistant. You'll still deal plenty of damage to them especially if you parry and I'm going to demonstrate that now. So here we have a Seeker and we're going to attempt to parry here and we parry and we can get in a couple of good hits there. You can see it's almost dead. We parry again. There you go nice and easy fight there. Now, if we swap over to the Frostner, it's pretty much the same situation, except you will get a chance to maybe get in one, maybe two more hits because they are slowed and you are extremely maneuverable because you're wearing the Fenris armor, or sorry, Fenris armor. So here we go, we have another one. So I'm just going to wait till it comes in, parry, 
hit it twice, wait for it to attack and run up, hit it again. And you can see we can kind of keep a distance there and just kind of clip it right before it attacks or right after it attacks because of the knockback we have with this. And that's it. That's those. They're pretty easy to deal with, even if you're fighting two of them. Here we go. You can see I have two of them. So if I clip one and roll out of the way, that one is now slowed, which should give the other one a little bit of purchase here for me to, well, if I don't fail, uh, should allow you to stun the one to be able to take care of the other. So there we go. We got him. Now we're going to let the other one come in. We're going to stun him, get two hits in, kind of get out of the way. And we're going to rinse and repeat that watching our stamina here. And you can see I took a hit there and it's not the end of the world because I have plenty of health to deal with getting hit. That's why I highly recommend using high health. Also, it gives you an advantage on shields. Here we go. We'll block and parry and hit him and there you go not a problem two of them relatively easy to deal with however it gets a little more hairy when you have three of them if you have three of them i highly recommend using a bow there is one other thing that they are well technically two other things that they are not resistant to and that is fire or poison if you have a fully upgraded draugr fang you can just use simple whatever arrows you want to use we're just going to be using some basic iron head arrows because iron becomes easy to get once you get into the mist lands. Now for this, what you're gonna do is keep your distance between you and them and just peck at them. So you have a lot more speed than they do and you can just kind of kite them around until you wear them down until you have one that is easier to deal with. The other thing you can do is get up high. If you get up in a high location, they cannot get you as easy. They do fly, yes, they do fly, but they have issues getting to you when you are at a high location, even even though they can fly. And as you can see here, you can kind of just kite them around. As long as you keep moving, they slow down when they go to attack, so you can outrun their attacks, and you just make sure you have space between you and them. But I highly recommend getting up to a higher location if you can, or putting something between you and them to make it easier to hit them. And I'll demonstrate this a lot better when we get over to the actual Mistlands. So now let's talk about the big boys. Let's talk about the brutes. You're usually only ever going to see one of these at a time, usually accompanied by some other random bug seeker things. So it'd either be the normal seeker, some ticks, just your other random seeker stuff. So these guys, you can parry and parrying them works out relatively well and lets you get to their weak spot, which is technically their butt. I'm not sure why it is not showing up weak with Frostner, which leads me to believe that the whole Frostner thing might actually be a bug, but we'll use this and I'll come in behind him here and hit him and I miss. Let's try this again. When they do this, it's a good chance to get behind him. There you go. You can see yellow damage. We're hitting his weakness there. But the good thing about fighting these guys with Frostner is that once you parry, once you get behind them, you slow them down so they can't spin as fast. They're very hard to get behind. If you have a partner that you're fighting with, dealing with these will be relatively easy, but solo, it can be a little bit difficult. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting the yellow damage. As you can see, we are able to stay behind him a little bit longer to get better hits in on him. So the idea here is what you want to do is wait till he does that, get behind him and start hitting him or parry him and then quickly run behind and start hitting and you can keep him slowed so that you can get in more hits there from the behind hitting him in the butt. Sorry, it's hard to focus and talk fighting these guys at the same time, but you get the idea. It works really well. Now, you don't have to parry. If you are not good at parrying, you can also just use your normal shields. I'm going to finish this guy off with parrying, though, to show you it's relatively easy to do. And we've got him nice and slow. I can get behind him and keep hitting him for that yellow damage. So now we're going to swap over to an iron tower shield. Once again, iron buckler, iron tower shield is enough if you have it fully upgraded to be able to deal with these. So here we go. We got the brood again. Now, all you want to do is just hold your block down until you get a chance to get in behind him. He's going to attack and you're going to try to swoop in and get in behind him to get a hit. Be careful when he does that. It has a pretty big AOE. And as you can see, we're getting in behind him. We're tearing him up. Now we're just going to block and we're going to hold our block and we're going to continue to just try to get in beside of him here. And you have a lot of health, so you're able to take those hits. Once again, that's why I suggest having a ton of health. Make sure you also watch your stamina. Don't get greedy. But as you can see, this fight is relatively easy. Just hold your block up when you can sprint in 
get a couple of hits, hold your block back up, and be ready to take any type of hits. If you walk to the side, you can dodge a lot of his attacks, and you can see that not a lot of damage is getting through, and our stun meter is not going up very high either because we have so much health. And really, if you don't like parrying, this works really well. As you can see, it's pretty easy to do to get in and be able to kill him there. And I'm just gonna go in, go ham, and finish him because we have the health for it. Nice and easy fight. All right, so let's take a look at this in a more practical setting. So here I am in the mist and I'm just kind of walking along minding my own business. Now, I advise not running in the Mistlands, but if you do, you may run up on something like this. If you take your time and you walk, you have a chance of clearing an area and being able to see something in front of you before you get into a fight. But you can see here, this guy just jumped me and there are other ones up there. I know that there are other ones up there. So what we're gonna do is attempt to fight him and I'm not gonna parry, I'm going to fight him like this. Here we go, now we have a another one in the fight. So let's see if we can find a place to get up high in order to deal with these. So the best thing you want to do is try to find an area that you can get up to high where you can put your back against something because otherwise their knockback is going to knock you into where or knock you wherever they can knock you. So here we go. We're going to jump up here. This is a halfway decent spot and we're just going to hold block and wait. Well, it's not a great spot for recording, so let's see if we can jump over here. And here we go, we have one right there. It actually didn't fly at us, so now I'm gonna swap to the bow and I'm going to just attempt to shoot it. And I don't know where the other one is. I'm assuming that it ran off, but you can see in a practical setting like this, it's relatively easy to lose one or two of them. I'm not even doing anything crazy here. I'm still not in Ghost, I'm not in God, nothing like that and I was able to lose one of them just fine and get to a place where I could handle them. But let's say we know that there's a bunch of them over here and just for demonstration purposes, I wanna try to get a bunch of them on me at one time. So I'm gonna just run up here real quick and see if I can aggro a bunch of them and I have. And now I'm going to get to a spot where I can put my back against the wall that is up high. That way I can block and they will all fall down and be at an angle and that's not a good spot. We need some stamina, so we're just gonna take our time here and not get too crazy. And let's see if we can jump up here and find a good spot. This one might work, so we're just gonna block here. We're gonna try our best to get our back against the wall, get in a crevice, and just hold block. I know it's kind of hard to see. There we go, now I got you a better view. And we're just gonna wait patiently, and eventually they will stop flying, and we can actually fight them. Okay, so there they've stopped flying and now they've just kind of gone into chill mode and I can start shooting at them. If I see any more fly up here, all I have to do is equip my shield and patiently wait until they calm down. Here we go and now I can go back into shooting them. So this is how you would deal with a bunch of them in a situation like this. You also wanna make sure that you watch your stamina. You don't want your stamina to go too low because you do wanna be able to block. I highly advise when you're regening your stamina to just block and wait patiently for it to regen. As long as your back is against the wall, you have your block like this, you should be all right if you are in a good spot. You wanna look for a spot that's at a steep angle because they can't deal with steep angles very well and they can't attack you from it very well. So like right here or even right here would probably be even better. And if they get above you, you want to get uh, always stay above them. So if they were to fly up here, I would simply jump up to here. And you can see that one just tried to come at me there. So I'm gonna get back down here and see if they come at me again. They are not, so we're fine, and I can easily deal with them with my bow. So really, all you need to deal with the Mistlands is your Draugr Fang bow. Whatever type of shield you prefer, I would advise probably bringing one of each, the Buckler and the Tower Shield, because they each have their uses. I find the Buckler pretty handy for stunning these guys in a one-on-one -on -one situation and dealing with them a lot easier in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but when you're fighting more than one of them, you want the tower shield so that you can cheese them as you see like I'm doing here and they're pretty easy to deal with. I don't even have that high bows. If you take a look, my bows is only at 18 and I'm not having any problems dealing with them. And now what I could do is I could swap over to the buckler and Frostner and go over here and attempt to fight this one. I'm gonna try to get us on even ground here. We're not, but I can just go to town. Uneven ground is king in Valheim. Here we got another one and he also cannot hit me. You can see there, here we go and we block him, and now I can't hit him and it's bad, so what I'm gonna do is just get up and out of the way, and we can honestly probably go down here and fight him one-on-one, -on -one. he might be the only one left. 
There we go. Wait for a parry, go in and take him out. As you can see, we did that. And now we should be able to come up here and this place should be pretty much clear. And it is. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim videos. And if you're looking for another interesting Valheim guide, you can find that on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.